although I've already talked about what the RTOC under Bishop Stefan did, what Father Vladimir Mordvinkin of Sacramento did. But in this video, I want to talk about Father Joseph in Portland. He's in the RTOC under Bishop Stefan. I'm just going to expose all these people now and, you know, teach them a lesson because they're arrogant and they're standoffish and they're of bad will and they're not of God, okay? So, Vladimir Moss, a few years ago, pointed me to Father Joseph and I was in brief email correspondence with Father Joseph and one day he told me to ask for blessings in my emails so I started doing that but I noticed when he would respond to me he wouldn't bless me so I sensed arrogance and pride in him I didn't understand why he told me to ask for blessings if he's not going to bless me anyway so I then wrote him and told him I had bad vibes toward him and I could be wrong people but it seems like from that point on our relationship went downhill and never recovered no matter what I did it never reco recovered people his pride was wounded his ego was crushed how dare I question that narcissist I'm, I'm not saying he's a narcissist but I do believe a lot of these old calendars clergy are narcissists one of the signs of a narcissist is that they cannot handle being questioned their egos cannot tolerate it their egos cannot handle being questioned okay so he just changed after that it seems like and i noticed how he changed and I, I wrote vladimir moss and told him about this and he responded and said there are no more ideal churches that was all he said okay so no matter what i did with father joseph no matter how many times i tried to start over with him he would not assist me people and this is utterly and completely reprehensible for a person who's a clergyman a clergyman should not be so selfish so self-centered that his ego his pride is more important to him than a sinner who is seeking salvation in the church these are the kind of people you have to deal with in this old calendarist block of schismatic operations people they have never given me any good reason for why they should be taken seriously okay so there were times I was willing to start over with Father Joseph and he, he, he turned me away people and I think it was the Nativity Fast of 2011 after this happened the Nativity Fast of 2011 was after this incident the email incident happened I contacted him and kindly asked him if I could take vitamin D3 during the Nativity Fast and he never answered the question people he never answered the question pure selfishness his pride and wounded ego and arrogance was more important to him if I were a priest and my worst enemy had asked that question, I would have contacted him and assisted him, assisted him speedily on this topic. See, but these people don't think in Christian and biblical terms because they're vainglorious and arrogant, okay? I never saw anything like this even when I was an evangelical. I mean, I, it's just different. The energy with these old counters clergy is different. They're not... In the image and likeness of Christ, they're very ideological, very political, very selfish people, very narcissistic, and very self-centered. Their egos and pride are more important to them than souls. So he did not answer my question when I asked about, I asked him if I could take vitamin D3 during the nativity fast, I think of 2011 it was, I believe. And there were, there were times that I tried to start over with him, like I said, and he, he just wouldn't have it, people. His wound, his, he was wounded. His ego was just wounded because I dared ask him a question. Or I, I, I told him I had bad vibes toward him, and it seems like he never recovered after that, people. So anyway, eventually what happened was that I had several polemical questions about the RTOC that needed to be answered before I joined the RTOC. I was using Vladimir Moss's criteria and standard he once wrote, we are not permitted to recognize a bishop until he has shown himself completely orthodox in word and deed, end quote. That's Vladimir Moss's own standard and criteria, which I think would eliminate the vast majority of every single bishop on the face of the earth. It's ridiculous. But I was using his standard. So I, I was testing the RTOC and its claims. I had several polemical questions, and I could not join that church until these questions were resolved in my mind. Father Joseph absolutely refused to answer these questions, people. 
He absolutely refused. And I cannot believe his arrogance, people. One time he even wrote me and told me to, to, to get mental health treatment. This is the kind of arrogance and narcissism you're dealing with in his people. This was not about me. This was not about me. It was about the RTOC. Me as a person has absolutely no logical correlation to the questions I asked. These were good questions. It was about the RTOC, okay? But he had to discredit me. So he absolutely refused to answer my polemical questions. And those questions are written below in the description box, people. You can look for yourself. Contrary to the Apostle Peter, he refused to answer my question. St. Peter said, be ready always to give an answer to every man that asketh you a reason of the hope that is in you with reverence and humility, something like that. These people are so odd, though. They're so peculiar. They're so strange. They're so tense. They, they don't reach out. They're not warm. They don't act like normal, decent, healthy human beings. I never saw anything this sick and creepy in mainstream orthodoxy or in evangelicals and people. So there's so many signs that the RTOC under Bishop Stefan and clergy in the old calendar system are, are not of God. There's so many signs that this is a, a system of rebellion and delusion. And it's just, it's cultic. They have cultic characteristics. And oh, by the way, when he told me to get mental health treatment, I, you know, I explained that was totally logically irrelevant because this wasn't about me, it was about the, the RTOC. He tried to shift the focus and discredit me. So he became judgmental and punitive. If you look at the culteducation.com website, it says under the section of healthy group slash leaders, it says a healthy group slash leader will answer your questions without becoming judgmental and punitive, end quote. He became judgmental and punitive people, and that is precisely what you would see in an unhealthy group slash leader situation. Okay, so look at the criteria of cultism, and the RTOC has some of the criteria. The GOC under Pavlos and Clinicals definitely have criteria for cultism. So look at the information below in the description box. I thank you for listening. This is Father Joseph of Portland. He is a fraud. Thank you for listening. I want to add a few more words here. One thing I've noticed with Russian Orthodox parishes that are old calendarist groups is that they don't think in Christian umbilical terms. They actually don't want strangers to come into their churches. They don't want to be disturbed. See, if you go to their church, you're disturbing them. They don't have missionary zeal. They don't have Christian love. They have no impact on society. They limit their faith to liturgy. They do nothing in their neighborhoods. They don't evangelize their neighborhoods. They really don't want people to come in. And, and when you go into one of these churches, they are bothered. They're disturbed. They don't want you there. You know, it's it's just totally unbiblical and it's totally unchristian. I was raised on Christianity. I know what Christianity is. I've studied the Bible my entire life, people. Okay? And... I would say that I have a better knowledge of orthodoxy and theology than the vast majority of the laymen in the world today, okay? When I was two years old, I, I sang a song to Jesus. We have me on cassette. And when I was five years old, I asked Jesus to come into my heart. My whole life has been focused on the study of scripture and of Christianity. I know what Christianity is. I know what orthodoxy is, people. And I categorically affirm to you people that these individuals, these old calendars clergy, do not represent Christ. They are not of God. Okay? Now, I do believe that some of them are pious, but most of them, I would say, most of the clergy are of bad will. They're in their positions for their own vainglory. They're narcissistic. I think that a hierarchical religious structure, a pyramid type structure, especially in the 20th and 21st centuries, is going to attract narcissistic type personalities or even create them. And I think that for a lot of these clergy, it's not spiritually healthy for them to be clergymen because it goes to their head. They're so used to people bowing before them, kissing their hands, men, women, and children kissing them, bowing before them. And when a person like me comes along and asks a question, an ecclesiastical or 
peripheral question, even not related to orthodoxy, or a dogmatic question, their egos just cannot handle it. They're not used to that. They want you to play ball, go along with their hypocrisy, duplicity, contradictions, deceit, and violations, or pack your bags and hit the road type of thinking. And this is not Christianity, people. It is not. Okay, I thank you for listening. Oh, I wanted to mention something else here. When I pointed out to Father Joseph how I believed he had violated Kennan's 52 and 58, and if I have room, I'll put them below in the description box, he wrote me back and told me that I'm not the interpreter of the canon's people. He did not respect me enough to clarify any misperception of them that he thought I had. He just arrogantly says I'm not the interpreter. That's one thing I noticed with these clergy. If they think I have a misunderstanding about something, they don't respect me enough to clarify it in my mind. They just leave me hanging. You know, all these videos that you see about these old counters clergy could have been prevented people and neutralized by these clergy if they just had been obedient and done their jobs. But they're so of bad will, you cannot reason with them. And so Father Joseph did not respect me enough to clarify anything in my mind. He asserted that, I, that I'm not the interpreter of the canons, implying, therefore, that I had a wrong interpretation. He never proved this. He just asserts it. But he didn't respect me, like I said. He did not respect me enough to clarify any misperception I had. And these people are standoffish and they're arrogant and they're not Christ-like. Thank you for listening. I want to say a few more words about Father Joseph's statement that I get mental health treatment. I did tell him that I have anxiety and depression, so that may be why he made that suggestion. But as explained in the video, it's logically irrelevant, and it was fallacious for him to raise that issue. He should have just answered my questions. Here are the reasons why his comment was fallacious. First, this is a red herring since he attempted to shift the focus away from the issue. This is not about me, it's about the RTOC. Are they guilty of the violations enunciated in the questions I asked? The state of a person's mind has absolutely no logical correlation to the issues raised. A person could be stark raving mad, but the RTOC could still be guilty as charged. Second, it's the psychogenetic fallacy. This fallacy occurs when an attempt is made to psychoanalyze a person who holds a certain view and this psychoanalysis is used as a reason that the person's view is not correct. This is a combination of the genetic fallacy and an ad hominem fallacy. It is failure to deal with the issue at hand. Third, it's a circumstantial ad hominem fallacy because a person's circumstances have no logical relevance to the issue at hand. Father Joseph would have to prove that my questions and concerns are the product of mental illness, and then after doing so, he would have to prove them invalid on that basis. He may also be guilty of the post hoc fallacy, also known as the fallacy of false cause. A comes before B, but A does not cause B. If I grant it for the sake of argument mental illness, it does not follow logically that my questions and concerns are the product of mental illness. Maybe I asked questions about the RTOC and had these concerns because I love truth. So Father Joseph should have engaged the arguments instead of shifting the focus. A person could be completely insane or the worst person on the face of the earth and still be telling the truth and giving a valid argument. Personal circumstances have absolutely no logical relevance whatsoever. Thank you for listening.